Hello there, my name is Rap for no Reason, and today we're talking about Varlamar. Well, not exactly. I already have a video out discussing all the upcoming content being released with Varlamar, so check that out if you're out of the loop, and subscribe to me to stay in the loop. I'm on the road to 1,000 subscribers, and your support would mean everything to me. But today, I want to give you guys some tips on preparing for Varlamar. Whether it's merchant or just general advice, I got you guys. And for Iron Chumps out there, and yes, that includes me, I'm making a separate video specifically for you as Iron Man require more planning than regular accounts and more niche content is applicable to those accounts than normal ones. I already created the script and I just have to make the video after I finish this one. Also, I know, Varlamore is coming out in only a few days and I would have released this video a few days ago too, but I had COVID. Of course, I still have it, but I'm recovering nicely and I feel like I'm finally good enough to start recording again. I mean, I can actually breathe. But that's enough of me yapping. Let's get on with the video already. My first piece of advice for everyone when preparing for big PVM updates like this is to join a clan. Joining a clan is something I highly recommend everyone does, period. Whether you're a noob, a veteran, or even a, a lone wolf, and God, saying that really made me cringe. Everyone should be in a clan. Being in a clan helps keep you engaged in the game by having groups of players to talk to and share achievements with. Even if you're not voice chatting with the boys in Discord or chatting in the clan shop, developing a sense of camaraderie and a sense of belonging and getting a, a nice when you receive notable achievements feels great. But there is a specific reason why I strongly suggest you guys get in the clan before partaking in Varamar content. To fully explain that though, we'll have to go back in time to January 5th, 2017, the date when Chambers of Zarek was released. When Chambers of Zarek was released, every world was packed with players trying to form a party and raid. Mid-levels, max players, peers, zerkers, you name it, and they were there. This brought a lot of problems though, and we'll go through some of those now. The first problem was, since this was new content and no one knew what they were doing, max players or players with best and slot everything were always picked, while everyone else had to spam and spam and spam and spam and spam, you get it. It really was like you were being picked last during PE and... Who could blame them? I mean, would you really want that guy? <laughs> would you really want a guy that benches 300 pounds and runs a six minute mile? Or the guy that can cut virtual logs for 300 hours? Being in a clan will help reduce things like this from happening as you can just play with your clanmates and not have to worry about finding teams. The second problem was, and this might be a bigger problem for viral more content, once people started to figure stuff out and develop strategies, they held that information in it for as long as they could and kept it within their inner circles so they could be the first ones to get super rare drops or just profit off of others' ignorance, and I don't fault these people for doing this. I mean, if you can profit off of keeping a secret from complete strangers, wouldn't you too? What I'm trying to say is, small groups of players were able to monopolize a lot of the strategies so they could be the ones to profit the most. For a little while, this even included gear. A great example of this was a Varix. Small groups of players would use Varix and no one really knew why until it became pub public knowledge that it was decent at Vasa and Tecton, which are two bosses and chambers, and that caused the price to skyrocket. I remember buying a Varix set for 10 mil in 2017 then selling it for a lot less a week later. Point is, I was behind the power curve, and I didn't know the strategies I were developing as the information wasn't being openly shared and I was all on my own. Being in a clan will help minimize this as you can share information and strategies amongst yourselves. You can learn from each other and give each other the best chance at success. The third and final problem, and this was the worst problem of them all, I'm BSing. Imagine you grinded 30 raids and, mind you, these are raids before anyone knew what they were doing. Each raid was a minimum of a single hour minimum to 4 hours with a lot of people dying. Imagine you went through all of that and your teammate got a unique item, a twisted bow. 
You're ecstatic because your entire four-man team agreed that you'd split the loot evenly before the raid even began. And this is a game change in amount of GP. I mean, you could finally get that 9 or herbal you always dreamed of getting. Now your teammate, he collects the loot, leaves, and everyone goes outside, and then he logs off. You try to message him, but he deleted you from his friends list. You see him in the same world the next day, and you try to get his attention, and he never responds. You're on his ignore list. He joins a new team, and the same thing happens again. The cycle repeats. This happened to a lot of people, especially in the early days of Chambers. It was so bad that someone created the website that tracked blacklisted players that BS'd other players. Now, seven years later, I actually can't find that website to show you guys. If I knew the name, I tried to use a Wayback Machine, but I just, I literally don't know it. I'm sorry I tried hard, but you'll just have to believe me. It was real. Now, this entire problem can be avoided. Well, maybe not avoided, but the odds of it happening to you can be minimized if you join a clan. Playing with trusted and known players in your own community will always be a lot safer. Now, will there be a lot of content where you need to be worried about BS and Varlamore? I guess it depends on whether or not the Coliseum could be tackled as a group activity and how Perilous Moons kinda pans out, but other than that, not really. As a quick TLDR to kinda summarize this and burn it all together, people can be awful when it benefits them, especially online. Join a clan with a group of trusted players that all hold each other accountable and you won't have to worry about finding a group to PVM with or finding PVM strategies or even BSing. You can set things up through your clan's Discord, log on, and just have fun. Alright, and here's where you either start to save money or profit off a merchant. Now, every big PVM release will always increase the price of foods and potions for two main reasons. The first and most obvious reason is that a lot of players are trying to get the new drops as soon as possible to make the most amount of GP. Now, new items are always valuable simply because they're new even if they're not that good. So they're chugging through those brews and resources and eating shards like it's nothing. Now the second reason is that no one really knows how to complete a lot of this content, so a lot of mistakes are gonna happen and people are gonna eat an abnormally large amount of foods and potions until they learn in new mechanics. It's inevitable. The best example of this is the Inferno. So many people competed to try to be one of the first three people to complete the Inferno because Jagex was offering amazing rewards including lifetime membership and being flown out to the UK to receive a real life Inferno cape. Now the Inferno was released on June 1st, 2017 and Wooks completed it on June 3rd, 2017. Wow, 2017 really was a good year for OSRS, huh? Anyways, how many, how many tries do you think it took him alone? How many brews, restores, runes, and potions do you think he alone used? Now multiply that by thousands because thousands of players were actively trying to get the cape. Even if they weren't the first ones to receive the rewards from Jagex, so many people wanted the cape just for BK or general PVM. It's going to be a similar story for the Coliseum, and as such, supplies are going to go up greatly. So if you want to buy supplies right now to try and save some GP, go for it. If you want to train Herbler, right now is a great time for it because you might even profit off of making a, a large quantity of brews if you buy the supplies right now and sell it a little while after the Coliseum's release. If you want to just buy supplies for a quick flip, go for it. It's inevitable with content like this that prices will rise. I guarantee you that you will profit. Now there's one thing that supplies and gear have in common when it comes to PVM, and that's usage. That's what makes prices go up or go down. Now anyone can tell you this, it's common sense, but it's not common practice. Not many people will take this opportunity to try and profit off of gear being bought or sold, and to each their own, that's fine, but here's my advice for someone who's played RuneScape on and off for 17 years. If you have the spare cash, buy whatever you think is going to rise in price because of the updates. To me, I saw that Barrow's Armor is going to be amazing in Perilous Moons because of the damage reduction mechanics that are being introduced. 
to me, that's definitive proof that Barrow's armor will rise, even if it's only marginal. If you guys want to know about those mechanics and more, check out my last video called Varlamor Sounds Insane. But here's a chart that's directly from the OS Rust blog covering Varlamor showing that you'll take significantly less damage while wearing Tegir armor. They even specifically mentioned Barrow's. Obviously, best in saw armor such as Torva will go up simply because it's the undisputably best melee armor in the game. With that said, if you think the Scythe is going to be best in saw for the Colosseum, send it. If you think the Inquisitor Mace and Grazi Rapier are going to be giga broken, send it. There's no data that really proves it, but if you're right, you're in the money. In a lot of ways, it's almost like gambling. I know it sounds ridiculous, I mean you should never prioritize a video game over your financial well-being, but seriously, unless it will genuinely affect your life or the others around you, try to take the day off and try your hand at all the content as soon as it comes in the game. Whether it's Hunter, Peros Moons, or the Coliseum, you have an opportunity to get the first few items in the game and sell it for ridiculous prices. Not only that, but being one of the first people there for the update, there's just there's just something about it that feels great. It's hype, it's new, it's fresh, and it's memorable. And that's the most important part of playing video games, right? To make memories and have a great time. And that's all I got for you guys. I know it's generic advice, but oftentimes we get complacent or try to look for some bigger, greater, more detailed approach to situations like this when the answers are simple and short. If you guys learned anything or liked my video, please consider subscribing. I'm on the road to 1,000 subscribers and your support would mean the world to me. Now if you guys dislike my video or think I'm a moron, type your hate comment below and, and whatever criticism you have, I promise I have thick skin and I'm capable of seeing perspectives that aren't my own. That's all I got, I am out, peace.